Hey everyone, it has been a few weeks since I have last recorded something. Been kind of working as much as I could on this, but I've also been extremely busy. I've had a lot going on. I was gone for a week on a vacation. Now I'm back and uh, there's been a lot that's happened since the last video. So I'm gonna go through it all with you guys uh, real quick and explain what the deal is with this car. So if you don't remember, this is a 1986 SVO. It's my dad's car that he's had since about 1995. He bought it for someone else and they, he drove it for a little while and decided, you know what, I'm gonna keep it because he liked it so much. Uh, it is a limited production car. They only made about 10,000 of them between 1984 and 1986. So, you saw me drag this car out of my backyard and I actually ended up driving it all the way around and I got it out front here. And sorry, there are so many vehicles out right now. This is a 76 truck that my dad just bought, pretty much just bought for the motor and then to sell the rest of the parts. The motor's gonna end up going in my 67, it's behind the shed over there. We had washed the car over there last time you saw it. I had sprayed it down. And then what you didn't see was the car started running a little funny. And I mean really funny. I mean, look at that, just... But it started having a really bad idle and it actually wouldn't stay running. And so I tried to keep it, let it run. I wanted it to just idle. And after a while, it uh, just wouldn't run at all. And I couldn't figure out what the deal was. So what happened was I couldn't figure out why the car wouldn't idle right. And to be completely honest, I'm not an expert in fuel injected cars. In fact, I really rarely work on them considering I put a motor in this car and it's carbureted and uh, the motor in that truck over there is carbureted and the motor in my 67 F250 is carbureted and the 68 midget back there is carbureted and the 72 Beetle This car was giving me trouble. Now the story on this car is uh, I pulled it out specifically because it's a turbo four cylinder and it actually gets really good gas mileage. And I have to start driving back to school again here in just under a month, actually, which is a little scary because last when I first pulled this car out, I had about two and a half months. I now have just under a month to, or a month, sorry, not even under a month, 20 days. Had to correct myself. I have 20 days, actually more like 18 days, counting the days down, to try to get this car ready before I go back to school. And that's where the problems come in. So, two and a half weeks ago, almost three weeks, I guess. And it was running great, it ran perfect. It started right up, you saw it started completely fine, drove fine, I actually drove it out from its grave. Tires all held air. Well, I'm gonna open up the hood and give you a little rundown of all the stuff that I did to try to fix it. So, that's turbo four cylinder. Fuel injected, one of the earliest electronic fuel injections Ford had. Some of the things I worked on, I actually still gotta put it back together. So, so far to try to fix my problem, I first started out with this nice little tray on the uh, bumper here. I started out with this guy. This is called a VAM, V-A-M, vane air meter. It's basically a door that opens and closes when vacuum gets pulled. It pretty much tells the computer how much vacuum and what whatever lots of different things for the turbo they do go bad pretty commonly so i started there i actually have to fix it because i did take the cover off to uh, check the needle sweep and make sure it wasn't stuttering it was but not because it was bad because i had some other problem with the car so i tested that i took the plug on and off ran it in limp mode it ran fine couldn't figure out what was wrong with it though because once i plugged it in all of a sudden it wouldn't run right could run it with it out though and it would idle but you couldn't had no throttle response and actually that was my biggest problem was that not only did i have a weird idle i had no throttle response either the minute you stepped on the throttle engine just died just went kaput so i went through and i started testing every single thing on this car i, I took the iac the idle air control or whatever it's called um, off and cleaned it and it was full of gunk so i actually did help the car and I checked the EGR, uh, make sure it's not stuck. It's not. I checked, or I checked the throttle position sensor with the bolt meter, made sure that was good, and it is, it's within spec. I did check for vacuum leaks, and I actually pulled uh, that nipple off the vacuum tree and 
I found it, no vacuum leaks. So then my next issue, after I did all those things, next thing I had to look for was, all right, maybe timing or something with the ignition. So I ended up taking all of the intercooler off and all the spark plugs out, found I did have one cracked spark plug. Um, so that was nice. The vehicle though was acting like it was running rich and the spark plugs all showed that. So I took all the spark plugs out, I bought spark plugs, I replaced the spark plugs, gapped them, you know, did everything I need to. Then as I was doing that, I actually broke a spark plug wire. It was so tight on the spark plug, it pulled the uh, clip out from the inside. Well, I tried to carefully push the uh, boot and the, the wire through the boot so I could put the clip back on and I just split the wire right at the boot. So I went, well, I gotta get new wires. So went and got, got new wires, uh, brand new. They're all Motocraft, by the way. I, I only used Motocraft Platinum plugs. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better. I am better. Which I know I'm not probably supposed to use. The copper ones supposedly work better, but they are the correct plugs. They're just the platinum ones. Correct Motocraft wires. These are the correct, uh, I believe they're eight mil flux core. Oh, and I cleaned the injectors. I took the injectors out. Took them out, cleaned every single one of them. Nothing wrong, they all work. Um, tested them just on the battery here. After all that, I, there, there might've been one or two other things that I've done that I did, but I might be missing something other than check the timing, fuel pressure regulator and pulse damper and fuel pressure. I did all that work, nothing changed. And so I thought, well, last thing to check, I think the only thing left was timing. Now check the timing and I pulled it and I pushed it and I checked it and nothing, no difference. Well, finally, I tested the fuel pressure. The literal last thing that I could have done, I tested the fuel pressure because I was like, well, I can't think of anything else. And the only thing is I thought the fuel pressure was okay because, well, I had fuel pressure, so I thought it was okay. I didn't think I had to test it that badly, but I thought, well, maybe I have a ba bad fuel pressure regulator or a bad pulse damper, because I have heard they go bad. And if either of those are clogged up, well, then you have no fuel pressure. So tested fuel pressure on the rail that's right behind this intake right here, zero. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd because I know I have fuel and I'm getting fuel, but zero pressure. I mean, that's, that's unusable on this car because you need at least 40. Drop the fuel tank. Fuel tank was immaculate. I mean, it was, it's brand, it looked like it was brand new inside. It actually looked literally brand new. I thought the 20 year old gas was going to ruin everything. It didn't. It was, I, I mean, it would look, literally looked like it was brand new. So I thought, well, the fuel pump's still good because everything in here looks brand new. The fuel pump looked perfect. The uh, fuel sock was perfect. So I thought, okay, it can't be that. And that's why I put it, put it off. I literally put it off for about a week. I spent a week trying to diagnose all the problems, checking all of the electrical, checking the voltages. And I did that for an entire week before I finally went and got a fuel pressure tester and realized that I had no fuel pressure. So I dropped the uh, tank again for the second time pulled out the fuel pump and what do you know? It wasn't the fuel pump necessarily, it might've been, but I don't think it was the fuel pump itself was bad. It was actually the hose connection pickup from the fuel pump to the pickup hose that goes on the tank, the actual thing that then connects it to the rest of the car. It did collapse. It was literally split apart and collapsed because it's just 20 year old rubber sitting in gas. And so it literally just collapsed and the rubber melted and it was non-existent. So that was the problem. The fuel pump was actually probably still good. So probably didn't need to spend 150 bucks on a fuel pump. So the fuel pump was bad. I replaced it two days ago. Um, I put it back in the tank, uh, but I had a problem and I created more problems for myself, which this is where I'll show you now because I can never just win at these things. This is the passenger side fuel tank strap bolt. I knew that I stripped it. Well, this bolt came out, but the other bolt that actually went in and out last time perfectly fine, it fought me a little bit. It fought me a lot of it. I actually broke the J clip that it attached to. And not only did I break the J clip, but I then continued to spin the bolt around with this half broken J clip on the bolt, hoping it would catch and maybe get stuck and un unscrew itself. Well, I'll get down here and uh, show you. So the fuel tank is just sitting right now, but if you look right here, you can see some, um, some grooves. I put a hole in my fuel tank. I cannot win with this stuff. So yeah, I put a hole in my fuel tank. But the next big project is this. 
Clear coat's a little peely, and that's actually why this car sat for so long. The car got painted. Clear coat immediately started peeling. Now, I've never fixed clear before. It's not gonna be perfect, and I'm not aiming for perfect because the car could have been perfect if the clear didn't peel, but it did, and it's been 20 years. So, uh, yeah, you'll see it when I get it running, but you'll see it, you'll see it here. Uh, I haven't released anything yet. I haven't even edited anything yet because I've been scared to release all this because I'm so new to it and I know that I've been screwing up so many times on the way, especially now that I put a hole in the gas tank. But I am learning on these fuel-injected cars. I, I'm just, it's not my comfort zone. Yeah, keep watching. Thanks, see you later.